Introduction Hey there! I love a good dice game, and you're about to learn one of the best. Backgammon is a two-player game that uses a special board. It's divided into two halves, called tables, by a partition running down the center, called the bar. The outer table is on your left, and the inner table is on your right. The 24 long, thin triangle things are called points. Players move their 15 pieces, called stones or men, along the points according to the dice rolls. The first person to bear off all their stones from the board is the winner. I'm not kidding. Moving stones off the board is really called bearing off. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm so darn good at this game. The board is set up as you see it here. We both move our stones along the points, but in opposite directions. Your dark stones move counterclockwise from the upper right side of the board around to the lower right side of the board, and my light stones move clockwise from the lower right around to the upper right. The count number underneath your name represents the number of points your stones have to move before they are all born off the board. We start by rolling one die each to see who goes first, and the winner uses the results as their first turn roll. For the turns after this, we each just roll our own dice. Click on your dice cup, and we'll get started. Okay, you go first. You move one stone for each die, and you have a six and a one to work with. You can use both the six and the one on the same stone if you want. You just can't move a stone to a point with two or more of your opponent's stones on it. To check your move options, hold your pointer over any one of your stones. An indicator will appear over the points where you can legally move it. During this tutorial, I'll indicate which stones you should move. You can start freestyling after the lesson, okay? Points with two or more stones on them are said to be closed, or made, and opposing stones can't land on them. When a stone is on a point by itself, it's called a blot. When an opposing stone lands on a blot, it's said to have been hit and is removed from play temporarily. Close as many points as possible. It reduces your opponent's movement options while keeping the board blot-free. Double twos. Doubles are great in backgammon for a couple of reasons. First, you get twice the moves of a normal roll. Instead of making two moves of two, you make four moves of two. Also, since the moves are all the same distance, it's easy to use the buddy system, relocating two stones from the same point to make a new point down the road. Okay, move your stones according to my brilliant advice. You hit my blot with that move, sending it to the bar. With a blot of mine on the bar, I'm not allowed to make any other moves until I roll it back into play onto your home table. That's the six points on your lower right there. Okay, I'll try my luck. Uh-oh, I'd say my luck needs some improving. See, I rolled a six and a four so I can only move my bar-bound blot onto the point four spaces in or the point six spaces in. Since both of these points are made, I have no legal move, and I forfeit my turn. It's your roll. That roll really helped you tighten the screws. You sent another blot to the bar while making a fourth point on your home table. Ideally, you want to make points with three stones instead of two. They're more flexible and stable. But when you can back your opponent into a tight corner, it's worth spreading your made points a bit thin. I need a really low roll here. Whoa-ho! Snake eyes! Just what the dice doctor ordered. That gives me four moves of one. I'll start by getting my blots off the bar, so I can move my other stones, and then make a point on my home table for an encore. Okay, you're up. 
With this roll, a classic move is to send one stone all the way from the upper right point over to the upper left point, since it's good to move your stones way in the back to safety. You can also move to protect that blot close to your home table while making yet another point to trap the stones I just freed from the bar. Let's do it that way. It's always fun to trap your opponent's stones on your home table. All righty, let's see what I can do here. Well, I've rolled better, but it'll do. You're up. Shake that cup. Box cars, the mother of all backgammon rolls. It's almost like someone has planned this whole game out so that you beat the pants off me. Not that I wear pants or anything. You now have four moves of six to work with, and the choice seems clear to me. Do you see your best move? Click next when you know what you would do with this roll and find out if we agree. With that move, you turned a blot into a made point and made six points in a row. This is called a prime, and you have trapped my poor stones behind an impenetrable wall of made points. There's nothing I can roll that will get those two stones out of the lower right corner past it. So, I have to focus on my other stones until you leave me an opening. Eventually you will, too, because you always have to move when you can, even if you don't want to. Okay, let's play out a few turns here. Hey, computer. Can you keep the high doubles coming here? Let's speed this practice game along a bit. Thanks. Now we're cooking. I guess all you have to do is ask. Hey, computer, can I get a bowl of berries and a big fresh salmon here? I can only use three of the four moves of six from that roll. You can't bear off any stones until all of your stones are in your home table. And I've got those two pesky stones stuck behind your wall of made points. My other stones can't move six without bearing off. And since I'm not allowed to do that yet, I forfeit the rest of my turn. Great! Now you have all your stones in your home table, and you can start burying them off on your next turn. As for me, I'm still stuck back here, but at least I can hop over your stone wall with a six. Boxcars sure would be nice about now. It's a miracle! A miracle, I tell you! Finally my stones escape. Let the bearing off begin. Think of the tray for the stones on the side of the board as another point, and you are using your rolls to move stones onto it exactly. With a four and five, you want to bear off stones from the fourth and fifth points in. I guess the whole miracle doubles thing is, uh, over. Your other move is a four, but you don't have a move that puts a stone exactly into the tray on a four. When this happens, you have to use the move on a stone farther away, if there is one. If there isn't, you can use the move to bear off a stone closer to home. Apparently, the magic doubles thing is still turned on for you. The fix is in, I tell ya! You have three moves of six left, and all of your remaining stones are fewer than six points away from being borne off. When you have more than you need like this, you bear off the stones farthest away first.
You have a commanding lead. Even though I'm now finally bearing off stones myself, I don't think all the double sixes in the world could help me. And that's game. Nice work. My pip count represents the number of moves I had left to bear off all my stones. Yours, obviously, is zero. If you win when your opponent hasn't borne off a stone, you've gammoned your opponent. If you win while your opponent still has a stone on your side of the board, then you've backgammoned them. Okay, so with the computer giving you perfect rolls all the time, you trounced me. Let's wrap this up and go play with an impartial computer. Maybe then I'll have a chance.